ATX Hackerspace. We started in uh, 2009, and it's uh, like many other hackerspaces, a creative place where people come together and build all kinds of things. Uh, a little earlier, you might have seen the, uh, the TARDIS that we made here. We've also made this wonderful main cabinet, and there's tons of stuff that happen in the hackerspace all the time. Myself, I'm an electronics engineer and a mechanical engineer, so I'm into uh, open hardware, I'm into the idea that designs are meant to be spread as far and as wide as possible. The patent system works, but it works even better when you can say, I made a thing, now you can make the same thing. It doesn't mean that you don't have commercial possibilities, there will always be money to be made in making a thing and selling a thing. But if you open the source of the hardware and the software, what happens is other make it better than you, make it faster than you, they essentially collaborate with you and collaborate for an idea. Because one person might have an idea, but a hundred people can improve that idea to the point where it's amazing. So the first thing I kind of want to show off is my Bluetooth cooler down here. Um, I designed it uh, using a couple TI devices, so we've got a, a four-phase boost converter that does 12 to 24 volts, mm -hmm. which powers a 150 watt per channel Class D amplifier. Mm -hmm. That's hooked up to a Bluetooth module which supplies audio uh, to the amplifier. And the idea for this is that you could make your own uh, Bluetooth cooler that you could use to you know, party with. Uh, I can show you kind of what's inside the cooler. Um, this board I actually accidentally blew up. This is kind of like a fail of the week here. Uh -huh. um, so instead I kind of set up a, a functional demonstration. So what I did actually was I took a uh, Bluetooth speaker and I took it apart. Mm -hmm. I tapped the uh, analog audio off the codec inside um, and I disabled the amplifier on that board. I then hooked that up to a car audio amplifier which is then hooked up to the speakers. Mm -hmm. um, and this thing has been all over the country. It's floated the river here in Texas several times. Uh, but for some reason it just decided to fail on us today. So, <laughs> so be it. Okay, so what we have done uh, previously is we make an E. coli in a normal bacteria that we'll have around. And we have engineered it so that it is addicted to caffeine. It needs to have caffeine to live. Without caffeine it dies. And so what we did previously is we used a bunch of standard beverages like a Coke, So what we're doing here is we're actually controlling uh, three switching power supplies, three boost converters, and we're doing that completely digitally. So traditionally this would be done with an analog control uh, IC, but we're doing this in software. So we sample current feedback mm -hmm. using our A to D converter. We do some DSP, run a, a control loop, and then we uh, update our PWM outputs so that we have a constant current going through the LEDs. This is like totally beta, but the newest version is going to connect to irrigation systems, and it links to your home Wi-Fi. It'll be solar powered, maybe we're trying to get it to fully run off of a little micro hydro turbine. We're not sure if we'll be able to with the power footprint, but basically like I'm taking myself out of the equation because a little computer will do a way better job of gardening than I've been able to. So it's all open source, it's called Robot. My buddy's got a related project called Robot Gardener that's like a fully automated greenhouse version. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're basically just trying to so, trying to get better at growing food by firing ourselves from it and building a variety of open source hardware to do it for us. Uh, on the bottom side, you'll see there's actually a launch pad uh, plugged into it. So the launch pad acts as that supervisory controller that runs all the balance algorithms and does communications uh, with your, uh, your controller on the ground. 
So there was a few uh, board level issues uh, with this board, and you know we learned a lot from doing this. You know, nothing is ever perfect the first time, but um, we proved out our motor control technology, and that's what I want to show you here. Mm -hmm. We've got um, all the motor spinning, and this guy actually has enough thrust to take off. Um, I don't want to put it up that high because if it, if without the, the balancing software, it's going to try and eat someone's face. That wouldn't be good. Uh, but you can see that we're able to spin these motors very, very uh, easily and efficiently using the Insta Spin technology. Like, you don't need another internet connected teddy bear. We've got, we've got enough of this. We definitely have enough internet connected teddy bear. We need more internet connected tomato plants. <laughs> Fewer internet connected teddy bears.